Hi and welcome. So this time around I'm going to make some tools to make things flat, but that's a little ambiguous because almost everything in the machine shop in one way or another is to make something flat or parallel, starting with the milling machine, the lathe, even the bandsaw. For more precision we have the surface grinder. And when things are small, we have sandpaper on a surface plate. So this is 3M adhesive abrasive paper. This one's 30 micron. It's translucent paper, so I can write under what the grit size is on it. 30 micron, 15 micron, and uh, 3 micron back there. And these are on surface plates. Uh, I bought a used stare at surface plate and uh, helps you make things flat. But if you want to go better, a step better than this, you need a lapping plate, which these aren't quite yet but we're going to make them into lapping plates. I looked to buy some, but they're quite expensive. And instead, I thought I'd follow Tom Lipton's route and make my own. So one way to get something arbitrarily flat is the three-piece method. Uh, if you have two plates and you rub them against each other with an abrasive, like diamond abrasive, uh, you risk having one of them convave, concave, one of them convex, and they won't get flat. But with three, you can make things as flat as you you want, depending on how much effort you're willing to put in. All right, so I've got one of these mounted on my four dot chuck. I've got it centered within a couple thousandths. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna face off one side and we're gonna take the side in to make it perpendicular to that face. And then we're gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side and try and actually get them to match. All righty. So we're gonna try this at uh, 440 RPM. I think I've got, double check, I've got this all tightened in really well. Definitely do not want this really heavy slug falling out of here. Okay. I think we should be okay. Thought about having my tailstock just sitting with a center, not touching, but so to prevent it, so that this couldn't actually fall out of here. That would really destroy the lathe if that happened. Um, I think we should be okay. That looks pretty good. So we're facing this thing off 25 thousandths and it is spraying debris everywhere. The feed rate is 3.3 thousand per revolution. So I've got this mag vise holding a brush. Keep the chips from flying all over the place. It helps a lot. Now we're gonna turn the side. Increase the feed rate a little bit, see if that improves things. Looks uh, much better. So we're just going to flip this guy around. Uh, we should have a nice perpendicular surface here. Oh, I got to relieve the edge though. Boy, oh boy. Wow, turn, I didn't know cast iron would turn up a burr. That's quite a burr. All right, I've got it indicated in. I'm going to take a much faster facing cut, um, much higher feed rate facing cut. We're going to go for 14 thousandths. Looks like I'm getting a much better finish, too, which is funny. Now we're going to do the side. All right. This one should be ready for surface grinding. Two more to do. All right, so I got a horrible surface finish in the middle of this guy. This was the low feed rate. The high feed rate on the back is actually much better. But the outside edge where the surface feed per minute was the highest uh, did okay. I think it was until there was some adhesion on the carbide insert. I actually found uh, bits of the cast iron stuck on the carbide. So they were probably dragging all the way across this. Higher feed rate seems to fix that problem. So this indicator is a 0 .002 millimeter or for US it's like uh, point, well, something like 75 micron, um, micro inches, or roughly point, point oh eight, point eight of a tenth, 
<laughs> 0.08 thousandths. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. It's, it's just like 75, uh, 75 millionths per division. So it actually did a really good job of parallel. So Next up, we're gonna surface grind the plates. And uh, this is where the precision ground flat stones really get come in handy. Um, this is a six by 18 surface grinder. So the fact that these are eight and a quarter inches diameter means I shouldn't be able to reach the limits. However, the throw of this wheel, uh, of the wheel or the table on this guy actually is something around eight inches. So I think I should be able to hit the whole top of these guys. So, so not only do I need to run the precision ground flat, flat stones over the magnet itself, but you can't see here down here i'm going to run the precision ground flat stones also over the uh, stone the the, uh, the lapping plates themselves because i want them to sit flat and repeatably so we can't have any burrs sticking up and precision ground flat stones really do a good job at removing burrs so we're going to take this guy and we're going to put it almost all the way back the the wheel will go almost all the way back and it goes a little bit other side of the chuck. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to reach it all here. I'm not sure that I will. And when I'm done with this operation, they should be relatively flat and parallel, provided I don't get a bit of grit underneath them. Seems like there's a low spot in the middle. So I can't get the whole of the wheel to touch the very edge of it, so it doesn't quite clear. No, it's much, much flatter, but uh, the center still dips. That's a thousand. So you can tell before we were doing a couple tens. So this uh, this little low spot is only a couple tenths. Thousands gets under it easily. So the other side isn't ground, so this may be a bad idea. I'm just kind of curious. I'm going to leave it on the magnetic plate and rotate 90 so that I can get this, what I think are high spots here and here. Because as you wear the wheel, it's going to taper. It's going to be more wear on this side than it is on the back side. So it's going to be start to be shaped like this, which means it's going to take less material off the front. And since it just barely reaches that, I think that'll be a problem. The only thing is rotating it like this may not uh, may not be a great solution either because well first of all the bottom's not perfectly flat so i may just be hosing myself let's just see i, I haven't raised or lowered it oh yeah So you notice it's sort of like this. There's a high spot in each end. It shouldn't stop in the middle of the part. And that's because I couldn't get the wheel all the way over to those sides to compensate for the wear. 
or the bottom is just a little irregular, which could be accurate as well. So I'm going to call that good on the first one. That's just the back. That's the rough. So now I should have a fairly flat spot to work off of when I flip it over to do the important side next. So I got to do two more of these on the back and then uh, we'll do the tops. So this plate has a dip in the middle about three thousandths. I think there was material stuck on the carbide insert that was dragging across the material and just uh, damaging it because this is quite a little hole here that I got to fix. This is just the bottom though. On the back of the second one here I discovered what happens if you go to the end of travel it actually makes the wheel dip into the table like 15 thousandths. So I can't go to the very end of travel and I guess they warned me ahead of time not to but that's what happens from my example. All right so we did the bottom now we're going to do the top and uh, I got this one upside down because that should be the top. So that side's very nice. I actually did that very carefully. Um, so this will become the bottom. Might have to touch this one up, but when I lap them all together with the diamond paste, then we're going to actually get to the final flatness. This is just to get them close. I'm just getting myself a step closer this way. That's the only reason for the surface grinding. May even be a mistake. I don't know. I've never made these before. All right, so I didn't want to show you the tedium of going over the top multiple times. So I did the bottom of this one. Since I screwed this up and made this the bottom, I did the other side, made it flat, then flipped this back over and just did a one-tenth pass over the whole thing. And it uh, looks like it's reasonably good. Uh, so I'm just going to do two more and I'll bring you back. All right, so here's the three plates ready for the next step. You notice on the side, one groove for the first one, two for the second, three for the third, and it's not symmetrical, so it shows which side's the top. So it always lets you know which end's up, which is handy. So the next uh, step is to put some relief slots in here for uh, grinding degree to, debris to go in, or lapping debris to go into, so that it doesn't sit between the two things that you're lapping, the plate and whatever the thing is you're lapping. So we're gonna do that next. I gotta figure out what an ideal spacing is. I see a lot of about a half an inch, but I don't know if that's excessive or not. So I'm gonna do a little research, see what I can find out, and we'll do some slotting next. After surface grinding, the finish looks really nice. This was 46 grit wheel. I might have considered going up to a higher grit wheel because it looks really good. But when you check it out under magnification, you can see that there are still lots of scratches in the surface. Now the flatness should be, I'm guessing, within a couple tenths. Uh, so that's good, but we've got to definitely get a finer surface finish than we've got now. Um, so next up, we're going to want to put a crosshatch pattern in here. Um, I thought of several ways of doing this. So the first way I thought of would be to pop this back into the lathe and with a training cutter cut rings. And if I, but that would only give me uh, relief from material when I'm trying to uh, lap something. That would give relief going in radially. Uh, but if I went side to side, uh, you could have material trapped under it for a fair distance, uh, which would prevent you from getting a good flat surface. Uh, so then if I wanted to improve that a little bit, I could do some radial cut lines in, in addition to the circular rings, uh, do that on the mill, and that wouldn't be too hard to do. Um, but the most common for hand lapping is a crosshatch pattern. So I need to get 90 degree reference points to do that and then figure out how to cut a 90 degree crosshatch pattern to this. That's the one I think I'm going to go with. Now I thought about milling flats on the side, on four of the sides, just small ones. So I'd have reference at 90 degrees. The only problem with that is that, um, a circle is a perfectly symmetrical shape. Meaning if I have another circle sitting on top and I push down, which I've got three of three of these, right? And so if I'm pushing down and I rotate and the flats line up, then it'll be equally supported all the way around. Uh, but if I rotate at 90 degrees or 45 degrees, uh, the flats will be unsupported uh, on one part and support, you know, overly supported on another part. And so the edges will not be particularly flat. Now I could just worry about the inside, but when you're doing the three, three uh, plate method or the three stone method of lapping to get something very flat, um, if I've got this right, the top one tends to go uh, concave 
and the bottom one tends to go convex because uh, you're wearing the edges on the bottom one more and the inside of the top one more. That's why you end up flipping stones over and alternating between all the stones. Uh, so that's a consideration. So you want a symmetrical shape, I think. Uh, and I think the circle is the only shape that's truly symmetrical, like a triangle or a square. All of those, when you rotate them a little bit, will have points overlapping nothing. And that's probably not good. As for grits for lapping, um, there's a bunch of different materials out there. There's garnet, there's silica, there's carbide, and the top of the food chain is diamond. And there's a difference between those grits uh, beyond how hard the base material is, and that is whether it is embedding or non-embedding grit. Diamond, being so hard, even in a cast iron lap like this, will tend, diamond particles tend to embed in the softer material. So if you're lapping copper on this, then it's gonna, they're gonna embed in the copper and that wouldn't work. But if you're doing tool steel on a, on a lap like this, the tool steel will be harder than the surface of the cast iron, so the diamond particles will tend to embed in the cast iron. And that's called charging the material. And they'll tend to stay, and, and so uh, if that's something you desire, that's fine, but you're kind of making the surface dedicated to that grit. And so if you, if you charge this with uh, uh, 30 micron diamonds, say, and you wanted to get a 0.1 micron surface finish on it, you'd have a really hard time uh, because those diamonds would still remain and they tend to scratch the part at the higher rate. So there's non-charging grits, and the non-charging grits are like garnet and silica, and they tend to roll between the two parts and get smaller and smaller until uh, they make a finer and finer finish, but they never embed in the material itself, or I should say never, but they're not, it's not likely for them to embed in the material themselves. So when I'm lapping these three plates against each other and I don't want to dedicate them to one particular grit, we are going to try using a non-charging grit like silica in this case, and I bought it from McMaster Carr. Um, but we'll get there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to do the crosshatch pattern in this, and so I have to figure out how to uh, get some 90 degree reference points. I might steal an idea that Tom Lipton used in his video making lapping plates. I've been following it very carefully because he's a great mentor and uh, uh, we'll probably use the method he used which is to take a plate with 90 degree sides and glue it onto the back. Uh, I'm just trying to think of another way that where I don't have to unglue it later and clean all the glue off but I think that's where we're at. 